Welcome everybody. My name is John Freeman and I'm the executive director of the Great Lakes Renewable Energy Association. And I wanna welcome everybody to our, our renewable energy seminar that we hold uh, on the, uh, the, the second Thursday of the month. And tonight we have a very special uh, presenter, uh, Mr. Dale Klein, who's gonna talk about the new time of day or time of use rates that DTE and Consumers Energy um, are switching to in March and how that adds some complexity to people that have solar or are interested in getting solar or just need help in understanding what this new policy means. But before I turn it over to Dale, I want to have a couple of housekeeping rules that everyone should go on mute. And then at the end of the presentation, we will open up for question and answers. Because we have over 93 people so far, um, we're gonna ask people to physically raise your hand under the reactions button if you have a question. I also want to acknowledge our sponsors for tonight's event, which is the Michigan Energy Office, which is a part of Eagle, the state of Michigan, McNaughton and McKay, Harvest Solar, and Homeland Solar. So our presenter tonight is Dale Klein. He is a GLREA member. He is a retired automotive engineer, and he has owned solar for 15 years. Dale principally wrote a 12-page memo that I made a link to on the several GLREA newsletters I sent out to people. And this, and this document, as you can see from the front screen from the, the, uh, the box, is where you can get access to it. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it right over to Dale, and he's going to walk us through a series of slides to explain the time of use and time of day rates. And then after that presentation's over, we're going to open up for general discussion. And again, please mute yourself because we don't want anybody to, to, to hinder other people's ability to hear what Dale has to say. So Dale, please take it away, and thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, John. And uh, let me know if you guys can't hear me or anything, but um, so recently, the utilities have uh, made the default rates uh, be a time of day rate or time of use rate. Um, they've been around for some time, but they haven't been the default anymore. So this happened for consumers a year or two ago, and, uh, and uh, DCE is implementing this now. So the goals of this talk and the document and the information and stuff, we want you to be able to choose the rate that's going to be best for you. And that's probably not what the utility is going to default you to. If you don't do anything, they'll switch you over to their, their new default rate. We also want to make it so that you understand time of day rates and, and uh, how they work and why we want them actually, uh, and how you can advocate uh, for those. If you want to follow along with the slides or the full document, the links are here and also in the, uh, in the chat. And you can add, you can put some uh, questions in the chat at any point if you want, um, and we'll we'll go through those and answer them at the end. So we'll start off first with giving sort of a short answer. Uh, this is, it depends on your point of view how complicated this topic is, but I'd like to say, here's a general recommendation that's probably best for everybody, and then we're going to talk more about why that is and, and more details about it. And the document is even kind of more details than we're going to cover today, but hopefully we'll cover all of the main points. So there's some background why we're why this is happening, and uh, there's some basic terminology that I'll cover first, and then uh, you know how this could save you on your bill, even if you don't have solar time of day rate. I know people who they were odd; they looked into what the rates were what what was available to them and years ago a decade ago they switched to a time of day rate because it fit their consumption better um, so then we'll compare the rates and i also want to tell you over and over again that if you're having trouble with the utility you're not the only one and you should complain to the public service commission and just be persistent in in asking for what you want they may not understand like the individual person you're talking to um, and and the utilities are not really, they're, they're there to make money. They're not really there to save us money. So you may need to speak up for, for yourself and for ourselves. Um, so first, 
the uh, kind of short answer. If I had to tell somebody in a minute, you know, what's the best thing they should do? Um, if you're on DTE, the one D 1.2 rate, which you might also refer to as the 11 to seven time of day rate is probably significantly better for you if you have solar. It's not gonna be their new default D 1.11, three to seven time of day. Uh, if you're on consumers, uh, the RPM, um, I forget now what, uh, I forget what the RPM stands for, but that's PM for nighttime. That's likely to be better, um, mostly for the second reason here is that it has a lower off-peak rate. Um, the DTE rate has both things going for it. They have a higher outflow rate that overlaps more with when your solar outflow is going to occur, or at least when you have less inflow. Um, and then when you definitely are gonna have inflow uh, is overnight, then these rates will have a lower rate. Um, so the DTE rate has both of those things. The consumer's rate sadly only has a lower uh, rate overnight. The, the rates are slightly different technically, during the day, during on peak. But when you look at them on a fair basis, which we'll do soon, um, it's, it's clear that they're really not different at all. So that's the, the one page kind of quick, quick answer. Um, so next, I wanna go one more here. I wanna talk about some basic terminology. So if you have solar, this diagram is sort of a cartoon that you might have monitoring for your system that would show you something like this, or this is a standard one that, uh, that you can, uh, if you have data, you can feed into and have this on your phone or whatever. Uh, but your solar is the thing at the top here that's generating electricity. And that's gonna go first into your house and run whatever loads you have. If you have a battery, some of it might go into the battery. And then last, any leftover is gonna to go to outflow. And so outflow equals your solar generation minus whatever you're self-consuming in the house at that time. Um, and inflow is kind of the opposite of that. If, you're, if your uh, house has some loads on, it's going to uh, <coughs> first get that from generation from your solar if it can. But if not, it's gonna come from inflow or from your battery discharging if you have a battery. So these are the kind of basic equations. Um, and that's the kind of first basic thing to understand. Um, next is what is, you know, what is the rate that you pay and what are some of the things that it's, it's, it's uh, made from? So your, the rate that you pay is made up mostly of power supply and delivery. Um, the power supply is going to vary with the time of day on the new time of day rates. And that is the cost to generate power plus any long distance transmission uh, charges, which, which is a relatively small amount. It's mostly just the cost to generate power or if they buy it from further away and, and, uh, and transmit it to us. Delivery is generally a fixed charge, at least for for residential customers, residential rates, it's a fixed amount. And that's the cost of delivering the electric through the utilities uh, grid. Um, the, um, the, if you're on distributed generation, the credit bank is gonna be in dollars. So whatever outflow and inflow you have gets put in a bank. And the outflow is roughly the power supply rate. It's not the whole retail rate. And whatever you pay for inflow is power supply plus the delivery. Uh, what goes in the piggy bank is really only outflow credits that's good to for power supply. And then whenever you have inflow, when you bring power back in from the grid, it first, the power supply amount comes out of your banked, um, power supply credit bank, but you still have to pay the delivery cost for the inflow. Um, so whatever you bank in your piggy bank without flow, 
it's kind of a coupon to cover power supply later for inflow. Um, if you're net metered, it's very simple. And this is a benefit to, to having net metering, but we, we don't have net metering anymore. We have distributed generation and uh, that's a whole separate discussion. But uh, some people are still net metered and it's just a one for one and what, what gets banked is kilowatt hours. And you would have, I, I could have shown it here on the chart, but I didn't, uh, you'll have a different piggy bank for each of the time of day periods. So you could have up to four uh, or so individual little piggy banks. So whatever you outflow on peak gets first used to cover inflow from that same time period, you know, sometime in the future. Okay, so that's the uh, basic uh, terminology. I hope that uh, works. Uh, and so now some background and history. Um, In 2016, there were some large changes to the uh, Michigan energy legislation. We, we uh, replaced, distributed, re replaced net metering with distributed generation first. That was the largest, most obvious change. But it also required in the future, which is now, more uh, encouragement for demand response and energy waste reduction, which includes time of day rates. Um, so a time of day rate basically is built is made to reflect the cost to generate electricity at different times of the day and potentially lets you take advantage of lower energy rates, usually overnight. Um, the reason that this is actually good for ratepayers, for customers, and, and good for the grid, but the utility is actually sad about this. So they're not going to really encourage people to switch to these, and they're going to do everything they can to have less effective time of day rates. Uh, the next slide I'll show what, what does it mean to be a, an effective time of day rate. But if you, if you the, uh, the impact on the whole system of time of day rates is that it's going to reduce loads at peak times when there's very little spare generation capacity. And that's what the utilities used to justify building more generation or at least keeping the same generation that they already have. All that costs us money. Every time the utility builds something more, they make 10% on it. And they charge that back to ratepayers in the next rate case. Um, so the utilities would love to have just plain old, like we had before, flat rates. So you, you pay the same price regardless of when you use it and how much, you know, up to a point. Technically, some of the rates before were tiered. So if you used a whole lot in a month, the price would go up a little bit. But that's what the utilities want. Build more generation capacity and keep on going. But if we have effective time of day rates, then there won't be as much need for new generation capacity. And just like solar, solar by itself reduces peak loads because generally the outflow, the, the creation of electricity happens time aligned with the uh, the peak loads on the system. So we actually do want time of day rates, even though the, the average customer might say, oh, this is more complicated and it's confusing. Yes, that's all true, but it is better for the system and it is better for us as rate payers because it will eventually prevent more generation capacity from being built and that will have that will be reduced rates. Um, a more effective rate, and GLRA and John Richter has testified about this in the past. Um, a more effective rate is one with a larger difference between peak and off-peak price. So that's the peak ratio. How much more does on-peak electricity cost than off-peak? If it was one to one, that's a normal flat rate. It's the same price whenever, whatever part of the day. Uh, so this plot shows, I believe it's 400 different across the across the U.S. time of day or time of use pilot rate studies, and they measured what's the uh, what's the change in peak consumption from all the people that are on those rates, and what is the rate difference, 
And so guess where DTE and consumers have their peak ratios? They're, they are exactly at the very bottom of the curve, which is based on actual data and common sense, the least effective. So we should push back with the Public Service Commission and the utilities to say this is just not effective. And we should actually have a higher, we should move towards higher peak ratios. Um, the D, D1.2 rate, which DTE has had for I think maybe 10 years or so, has actually over the last three rate cases been moved to a lower, less effective peak ratio. This is the opposite of what we want. And for my system, my solar, how much I outflow and then inflow, I see that that impacts directly my return on investment. And it also impacts the benefit to the grid of having time of use rates. People will care less if the time, if the price difference is less. Uh, their next rate case, they propose uh, even going further, uh, at least to disadvantage solar customers, they would put all of the difference into the distribution portion. And so that would be much worse for, for, for uh, solar customers. So please feel free to uh, put in your opinion uh, on that, uh, that point with the Public Service Commission in the future. Both you know, comments to the, to, to the commissioners or commenting on rate cases on the website, it's pretty easy. Um, you can just type stuff in. Um, okay, so these are the slides we covered so far. So next, um, how can you, what are, the, what are the ways that you'd be able to save uh, with a time of day rate? Um, so there's potential to save whether or not you have solar. Um, it, it's more, it's better if you have solar for a time of day rate because any outflow that you make is going to be during the middle of the day when electricity is priced higher, and therefore the outflow compensation is higher. And then any inflow that you're gonna have, if you have solar, then you probably have more inflow overnight than you had during the day, because during the day, you probably had no, you had probably less inflow. Um, this top chart, the blue line is, what you might have for your loads in the house. And so at nighttime, that's your inflow. Unless you have batteries, you might run that from batteries. And then during the day, you still have that load, but it gets supplied first by your solar generation. And then if you have any extra solar generation, it, it becomes outflow, it goes out to the grid. And then in the evening is like overnight. Um, so these different times of the day, the outflow rate is what's gonna matter most to you during the middle of the day when it might be peak. And overnight, the inflow rate is what's gonna matter um, uh, because that's probably when you have uh, inflow. Even if you don't have solar, if you can do anything like program your water heater to run differently or just choose to run your dishwasher at night or the evening, um, those are relatively smaller things, but you can still easily save that. And for example, my, my boss, at work way back, uh, one time I realized I had solar panels and I've, I was always talking to everybody at work about it. One time I realized, oh, he's on the time of day D1.2 rate all by himself, not me convincing him or anything, but he's an engineer and he looked at what the rates are and decided, oh yeah, I can move some of my loads around. And he's maybe not usually home during the day anyway, because he works. So um, that might not be always the case now these days if you work from home, but um, that's a case even without solar, you could uh, you could benefit from this. Um, so next we'll look at plots of DTEs and consumers rates and plot it in a way that's kind of apples to apples among all of the, all of the rates. Um, both utilities have pictures and graphics on their on their websites that show the rates. They don't necessarily show all three of them in the same way. And the way you can plot something, you can always make the, 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 the scales on the axes tell what you want to tell. So they show, yeah, there's a big difference here be between the, the rates on peak. And you, you'll see on the next slide, not, not exactly so. Um, the first chart on the top here is what we described so far, when you might have outflow, when you might have inflow. The middle chart here is DTE's rates, um, both the inflow rate and the outflow rate. So the inflow rate is the solid lines at, top, at the top. 
And inflow is going to matter to you when you might have inflow, which is when you're going to be paying for electricity, maybe, which is uh, nighttime overnight and the evenings. So you want the lowest rate. So here the green line is low for a long time, all the way until 11 a.m. And the yellow line here, D1.8, is about the same overnight. But then right away, first thing in the morning, 7 a.m., it goes up to almost the same as the default rate, uh, D111, the red line. And then what matters in the middle of the day when it's sunny, when you have outflow, is an outflow compensation that's as high as possible. So this is the, the dotted lines of the outflow, as high as possible for as long as possible that overlaps with your solar outflow. Um, the rates are higher during the middle of the day because electricity is expensive. Generally, everybody wants it to run their, their commercial uh, businesses, their factories, and all of the residential stuff. So that's why it's higher. And so your outflow compensation is appropriately higher uh, when, when, the, uh, when the inflow rate is higher. So again, uh, D1.2 is better because it has, it's much wider. You get all day, you get eight hours at this higher rate. Although D1.8 is a little higher, but it's just for a shorter period of time. And so when we look at the area under the curve, uh, the, the bottom plot here is what's gonna be important in dollars. Um, it, you multiply how much, how many kilowatts did you bring in in that hour? So whatever, a half or one uh, overnight is a reasonable amount of load for a house typically, times whatever the inflow rate is. And so then that's the, the cost per hour. So 10 cents per hour uh, overnight versus like seven or eight cents per hour overnight if you have D1.2 or D1.8. Um, and then in the middle of the day, what you care about is how much outflow compensation you get for whatever you send out. And so the, the green line here has much more, has some more area under the curve than the other two because it's, it's higher for longer. Now the, the yellow line is the 1.8. Yeah, it's a little bit higher here, but it's at the time of day when you're probably uh, when the solar generation is starting to come down and you're probably having less outflow or you might have more inflow by that time. So um, based on looking at this, this kind of plot, just, um, uh, just uh, quali uh, qualitatively, you can say that uh, D1.2 is gonna be better. Um, so that's the basic idea. So next we'll look at uh, the same idea for consumers. Um, and here, what's interesting is that uh, the inflow rates, um, there is a lower inflow rate for the RPM rate, and that's significant. It's only in the middle of the night, only from midnight to 6 a.m., I think. There's no difference in the evening, which is a shame. Um, and then the uh, during the day, the outflow compensation or the amount, the amount that you would pay for inflow, either one, they're, they're identical really. Um, they are very slightly different, but uh, it's not significant. Um, and I should also explain this plot in the center on both of these, the last slide and this one, this is the, the rates for each of the rates uh, weighted by how many summer months and winter months there are. So some of these rates for consumers have uh, like higher just in the summer, like the RSP. Yeah, it's higher in the summer for maybe four months, um, but there's, then there's four months of the year and the, the rest of them are winter. When you, you average those together based on the number of months and based on uh, peak, peak rates are only during weekdays. So there's five peak days during the week and two weekends. Um, so they, they're really not significantly different. I think that I, I'd recommend that consumers, customers complain to the Public Service Commission that there is not a reasonably large, significant choice among rates. Part of rate design is that uh, there's supposed to be choice for customers to choose something that's gonna be better for them. And here there's no difference.
uh, quantitatively, really no difference. So then if we turn that into dollars based on how much, how many kilowatt hours of inflow you might have times the rate, um, this is, you can see the area under the curve and RPM would be better because the overnight cost is, it's gonna be a little bit better for you, but otherwise it's, uh, there's no difference really. Um, so next, you know, if they, if they give you trouble, I've seen or heard um, about, it may be sort of hit or miss which person you talk to when you call on the phone. Some people have had no trouble at all when they called to say that I want they wanted a certain rate. Other people, multiple times, two, three, four times calling, um, they get the same, no, you're not allowed to have that because you have solar or different excuses. In addition, the website, at least DT's website currently, is still incorrect. The website says, like, if you log in and you have solar already, like your DG or net metered, it knows you have solar. It says you can't have those rates on the website. So most people would not question that, but you need to. Um, their website is wrong. And when you call, chances are you might get somebody telling you the wrong thing also. The rate book and the rate card, which are approved by the Public Service Commission, they have the correct information. Those are on their websites, buried in there somewhere. There's links to those maybe in the, uh, the other presentation or, or just Google, you'll find them. Um, the correct information about what rates are available is with DTE, you're allowed to any one of these three rates, 1.1, 1.2, or 1.8. Uh, I'm sorry, this is D1.11, sorry, um, are available with DG. If you have net metering, then on D111, sorry for the typo there, and D1.2 are available, but not D1.8. And D1.8 is probably not something that you want. If, if you're listening to this talk and you, you've already decided you want D1.8, then you, then you want it. But it's the most complicated option. And uh, it's probably not going to be, it could be if you manage it correctly and work on it, <laughs> plan every, how you do things, how you run your system. Yeah, you could potentially do better than D1.2, but it, it takes some effort. Um, uh, for consumers, as far as I know, all of these are available, whether you're DG or net metered. Um, so next, I think this is the last slide. And uh, so go ahead and you know we'll, we'll start doing questions. And if you're if you want to do more homework first, I would get the most value from your solar installation, which is probably to switch to D1.2 or the RPM rate if you haven't already. Um, don't let the utility tell you you can't have it because they're wrong. Um, and you know, unless your system is kind of, I could imagine some system, like if you had lots of, lots of loads uh, and you had a relatively small solar system, solar array, then it's not gonna make much difference either way. If you had lots of um, cooling loads for air conditioning that you just can't give up and the uh, extra cost, for those um, during summer peak days, then that might, uh, you might be better to stay with the, the more default uh, flatter D111. Um, but otherwise, I, I don't think that's usually the case for most people. Um, second, um, the utilities are supposed to advise you based on the data at hand, which would, would be your previous usage, they should, do a detailed calculation for you. They should have a tool to do that. DT's website is currently still incomplete. They have a link to a tool that should do that. But for the past four to six weeks, I've been trying it and it still just says, check back in another week. Um, so go ahead and ask for that. I've asked for it, but they, they, haven't, uh, they haven't satisfied me yet. But uh, I don't know, I, don't, I try not to bother them too much because I very, bothered them a lot myself personally. So I don't wanna stick out like too much of a sore thumb. Um, you could download your usage data and see, understand what your consumption looks like and what your generation looks like. And uh, that, that'd be another good step. If you're even more interested to do uh, calculations, there's a spreadsheet and there's a link here. And thanks to uh, Reuven, I'm not sure if he's on right now, but uh, uh, in, there's a Facebook group uh, for, uh, for us that uh, we've had some discussions in the past about uh, using a spreadsheet like this. So that might be useful to you if you're interested. And last, 
please feel free to contact the Public Service Commission about anything that you're unsatisfied with with the utilities. Comment on the rate cases. Uh, you know, there's lots of things to comment about on the rate cases, but one of them is that time of day rates should have a higher, more effective peak ratio, not less. Um, so I think that's it. Any, uh, I think we can start with questions now. Okay, so we're going to begin. Thank you, Dale, for the presentation. Um, we're going to begin, and a couple of people have already raised their hands, and I appreciate that. So continue raising your hand until I call upon you, and we'll start with Dave Curtis. Unmute yourself, Dave, and tell us, yep. tell us your question. On the consumer's uh, uh, so, uh, rate uh, thing there, where they where they track along, there's very little difference between inflow and outflow. Yep. Doesn't that correspond more closely with net metering? Or am I reading that wrong? Well, so net metering, you whatever your outflow is, you get the same credit back right, as right, inflow. Right. So the rates matter maybe less to you. And also, like I mentioned, the multiple piggy banks. There's a section, there's a whole page in the uh, the other document that talks about this, but I did switch. I When I was still net metered, I did switch to a time of day rate because my outflow was during the peak bucket. And so I built up more credit. I couldn't oh, yeah. use that credit you. directly because I never had inflow on peak. However, when you switch, when you when your 10 years of net metering ends, they will cash that out as dollars in your account because they have no other way to do that. And that's required by the Public Service Commission. Um, so you can you can you can still choose whichever time of day rate you want. Like you're gonna have multiple buckets regardless if right, you're net right. metered. But yeah. if you have one of the rates that's got very little difference between that or or consumers rates also see how they're all the peak time is only in the afternoon so um you may not make so much more inflow or so much more outflow than you get as inflow during that time so i, I gotcha sure so one other quick quick yep. one on on a consumer's bill currently like my rate is uh one zero zero one that'll be changing then uh, consumers made this change sometime in the last year or two, and so they're not changing anybody right now. You've already in the past been changed by default was to RSP. I don't know what number that uh, translates to on your bill, but the, oh, uh, I see. the summer peak rate, that's the old default, and that's the red line here. So it's, um, you could, I don't see, I don't see why anybody on consumers wouldn't choose the rpm rate regardless of solar or not because the only difference between them is that you could have a lower rate overnight right so, right okay very good thank you yep michael yeah um question uh, in your opinion you know i have solar in a battery i make uh quite a bit more uh, uh produce a lot more and and feedback into the grid during the hot summer days, do you think I'm getting fairly compensated or should we demand more compensation for us that have rooftop solar? Uh, because they're charging more during the day for every other customer. Shouldn't we be getting compensated more since electricity is supposed to be more expensive during that? Yeah, yeah, you should be compensated more. And that's what, I mean, it, it already is. Did you say your net metered or your, your DG? Uh, I've 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 had I've had my system for twelve years, so I'm just a DG. Okay, and so um, I mean the outflow compensation is already um, it's kind of a separate really discussion. Yes, outflow should be compensated more because there's many more you know extra value of solar, but it that's a sort of qualitative or, or a political discussion really too about exactly what is the value of solar. Um, currently, Public Service Commission has made it to be valued based on the power supply component and the long distance transmission uh, amount. 
but not for distribution locally. Even that's not really correct. Really, when you have solar, your outflow goes over to your neighbors and it uses very little of the distribution grid to get there. It uses zero to, to one uh, transformers and none of the rest of the grid. So you're saving load on the rest of the grid and it's happening when the, the grid is under peak uh, constraints. You know, it's happening at, at peak times. So there's value to that, that we're not compensated for. So yes, you should comment in the rate cases um, to, to that effect, to say that you're, you, you believe your outflow should be compensated. Like net metering is fine. That's kind of perfect one-to-one, -one. Um, but it, there's difficulties with that too, because it's, it's a simple answer, but it's not so like technically correct. You can't get into all these details about exactly how much it should be worth. And so I'm not, I'm not convinced that we should be, that's just my opinion. I'm not sure that you, we should try to bother asking for net metering back. I think we should ask for appropriate and correct outflow compensation, which actually could turn out to be more than the net metering outflow compensation, but that's something that can change over time. But Dale, you did say earlier that if, if people switch to the 1.2, that the outflow compensation during the peak time will be higher than the outflow in the non-peak time, correct? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. And, um, yep. The so other, I should switch to one point two is what you're saying. Yeah, I would switch to to one point two whether you're on net metering or DG. If you're on net metering and you've just gotten on net metering and you build up a credit bank um, over a couple of years and you don't want to let the utility sit on that value, you could change to one of the other rates for a year. And um, when they do that, they will have to cash out those buckets because those buckets are, their special buckets for that rate valued at whatever that, that rate was for that time period. And they, it's just, they, it's kilowatt hours of that flavor. And so now you're gonna switch to a different set of, a different flavor of buckets and um, that's what they'll have to do. So that's the way around that. Thank right, you, Michael. thank you. Good question, Michael. Okay, we'll go now to Michelle. Thanks so much, Dale, for that really clear uh, and helpful presentation. I have a question, and I saw from the chat that someone else probably has a similar question since we put our systems in about the same time. So our system went in in 2007. We're therefore past the 10-year net metering now. Um, however, we're still part of solar currents, and I wonder, does what you're saying apply to us? I wasn't aware that we would get more um, at the peak time of day. When, when I was sent a thing about this from DTE, they never mentioned that. So I assumed we would just get the same amount all the time um, as part of the solar currents thing. So do you know anything about that? Are, are yeah, we can, this? Yeah. Thanks. So uh, ours was ours we installed in 2011 also, which was uh, um, under the solar currents program also. The solar currents program goes for 20 years and you get the uh, whatever the, uh, the renewable energy credits payment is for that. The early phase was 11 cents kilowatt hour. Uh, later in 2014, 15, it was something like four cents. And that will continue for 20 years, regardless. The right. rates that you're on don't really have anything to do with the solar currents program. The rates that you're on, you used to be on the D1 rate, probably, and they will put you on the D111 rate. Right. And so you'll have you'll have a winter bucket, a summer bucket for on peak and off peak. So you have these four buckets, and um, you'll build them up. But it, it might not really build up that much, just because. Um, I don't know, the summer, the summer bucket might still build up. It, it, you'd have to see. It, it'll be depend on your um, your system. If you switch to the D one point two rate, then more likely the summer on peak bucket will will build up, and that's okay. It's just that you're sort of banking some value of electricity with the utility. The good thing is that electricity prices are probably only going to go up. So you sent them. Um, however many kilowatt hours this year at whatever the rate was, next year they're going to raise the rate. And the year after that, they're going to raise the rate. When you are done with that metering 
or if you switch to a different, if you want to switch to D111 and when you're still net metered, they will cash out those those buckets because they're they don't apply to you anymore. And uh, so you can you can do it either that way or it might just run out. So we're still um, the 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 rates, the higher rates in the middle of the day are, will apply to us as well. So it sounds as though it's still better right. for us to have the D12 rather than what they put us on, which was the D1 D1, I guess. Um, D111, yes. D1 11, yes. Yes. For okay. for net metering, the other way to say it is that your inflow rate and your outflow rate are the top bold lines here. Uh, the, the bottom dotted lines don't apply to you. Um, your inflow rate and your outflow rate are the same. Mm -hmm. so, okay. But it's banked in kilowatt hours. So um, it will, it, it's how many kilowatt hours during that time period, which are valued at whatever the current rate is for that time period. So your bill should show however many kilowatt hours, and then they'll also show what's the current dollar value of that, um, if I remember correctly from before. Thank you, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, Jim, you're up, Jim Heyman. Yeah, so um, I realize this question might be um, too too vague or everyone's situation might be different. So, you know, uh, if there's not a good answer, that that's fine, but I'm, I just uh, put in a new system, uh, just getting it up and running in the last couple of weeks without a battery. And so I'm wondering, and I'm a DTE customer and I'll probably use the 1.2 uh, plan. Is, is this gonna have any really meaningful impact on like my payback period for my system? Yeah. Or is, I mean, it, is it, you know, are we, you know, it's probably like 10 to 15 years or something. and. I mean, are we talking about like a year or two, or is it is this more meaningful than than that? Um, well, I guess I maybe say it in another way. Like uh, the change from net metering to distributed generation would have had a significant impact on your your payback period. Um, the uh, time the the change from the flat rate that we had before to one of these time of day rates. If you switch to D one point two, that will be better than what you had before with the flat rate. I changed to the D1.2 rate before they took away the flat rate. Um, the D111 is probably similar or maybe probably similar to the old flat rate, maybe worse. Uh, I, I don't know, it's hard to say whether it would be really worse than the old flat rate, but D1.2 is better than either of the old flat rate or D111. So the bottom line, Jim, is that your payback period may go down if with this new 1.2 rate, because you're getting more compensation during the middle of the day, which means that you'll be saving more money more quickly. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Louise, you're next. Thank you very much. Um, I'm trying to get the video off. We, um, we have a whole house generator and our solar, we started in 2017. And when we have, when, there, when DTE, when DTE, when DTE has a power outage, we can't generate um, anything. So we lose that way. Plus then with our whole house generator, um, we are paying, consumers for the gas that we use um, in, to, to run the generator. So we'll have some, um, some electricity in the house. Is there any, any, you know, to whom would we complain about this? The 25 or $35 a day um, rate that they're going to pay when people are, are um, uh, when there's an outage. Yeah. It doesn't begin to compensate because we lose all that time of generating. Yeah, it's it's true. Yeah, your solar, your grid tied solar won't generate, won't, won't create any power when you're when the power when the grid is out and your whole house generator, your propane or sorry, natural gas generator is running. Um, yeah, your solar. But I think that the the loss of the value of the solar during that time is relatively small compared to the cost of running the natural gas generator. You might be 
you might be losing one or two dollars of value per day from your solar uh, generation during a power outage where, like you said, I could see 20, 30 dollars or something maybe cost to run the, uh, the natural gas generator. Um, so that's a, like, you know, the power outage issue that everyone is complaining about with DTE, especially and consumers, but um, I don't know which utility is really any better in that case, but uh, that's just a general uh, a concern about power outages. Yeah, you should definitely complain to the Public Service Commission um, just in general. Yeah, I'm sorry about Thank that. You. Okay, you. we got to move on because we're running out of time. Jan, you're up. Yeah, hey, Dale, thanks so much for this presentation. I have a two-part question about how you tell DTE that um, you want to switch rates. Do you, do you just call them up at their switchboard number and wait for a couple hours and talk to whoever you get? Or is that <laughs> there a better way to do that? That's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is if they tell you, oh, no, 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 we can't switch you, and you say, no, you're wrong, you have to switch. Is there any circumstance where they would be right? What do you say to them? Um, you tell them that no, you've read the rate book and the, the rate card and the rate card and the rate book show you, tell you that you can have D1.2 with solar and um, if that's the one you want. And if they still, they still um, say you can't, then just right away uh, put in a complaint on the Public Service Commission website and you'll get relatively quick within a couple of days, you'll get some or a week, you will get some uh, response back. Okay. And um, and you can also contact GLREA, and we can call up DTE and tell them point blank that they're they're not communicating the right information. So, and the, the other um, the other thing too, there is a solar hotline or solar line. It's a, it's a different number, and then extension number four. It's listed somewhere on the website. If you go under renewable energy or or distributed generation section of DTE's website, you'll find that phone number. You okay. might. The people that you reach there might be more educated. Um, I've, uh, or you could try the general number. Um, but. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, Ray, go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, so, but I think the day before I got this email, my I'd already received one from my solar installer and they mentioned this, so I actually already called DTE. Their comment was, if you're already on a rate, they're not gonna switch you. Um, and I, I guess I'm, I, I said, okay, but then I got your email and I'm like, maybe I'll just follow up on this and find out. My, yeah, my bill, pardon? They, they have told some people, oh, we've already switched you to D111 and that just happened this month. So no, you can't switch. That is incorrect. People have already complained about that with the Public Service Commission. And the answer is no, you did not choose that rate. DTE chose to put you on that. And no, you are allowed to still switch to the rate you want. Um, so. so my current bill says, one that way it's due now, it says that I'm on R18 category one. Yeah, will, that's, yep. will the next bill show up as, uh, if it's different, will it show up on the bill in the same place or is are they a little ob ob obtuse on how they display this? Um, I'm not sure what it'll look like, but R18 category one is that your distributed generation and uh, it'll probably say time of day on it where before it might've said, D1, um, I'm not sure what it was called, but. And the change is expected to be in the next, this next, on the next bill, I should notice it. Um, DT said they were gonna switch everybody in March, but I keep going around. I'm, it looks like I'm snooping to my neighbors. I keep looking at all their meters and I haven't seen any of them that have been reprogrammed for time of day yet. And so I don't, they must've changed some people by now because they were supposed to, but I don't know. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen any of my neighbors at least, but probably somebody has gone. So they have to do it in waves. They they should be programming them uh, remotely, um, but it may take them some time. Okay. So there's no no easy way to tell if you've been switched if you even if you called. You can go look at your meter and see what your meter says. If it says the same as it has has before, if it only shows. If all you see is a register that says 004 and then a big kilowatt number, that's the normal configuration for uh, for uh, for D1. But well, if you're you're already you already have solar, so it, there should already be an inflow and an outflow register. You should see 004 and 005 
Um, if you see more than that, then they have switched you to the new the new one also. I haven't seen a meter that's that's been programmed to D111, so I'm not exactly sure what it might look like. All right, Dwayne. Uh, this is very similar following on Ray's comment. I, I think I talked to them and I thought I had been switched uh, from to uh, D1.8 before I heard about D1.2. And I think I read that you can only change once a year. So my question, if I had to change and I called back to them and say, I want to go to 1.8 at 1.2, they legitimately could say I can't. I'm sorry, I didn't follow. If you've already changed recently, then yeah, you can't change again. But if they have if they have changed you um, just because you didn't hear about this, um, then that's fine. You can still change to the rate you want. Okay, I think I think I made an effort to make that change. So I probably got to wait 11 and a half months before. I what did you change to again? The, the, the new one, the one point or the one point eight. Yeah. So one page, if you wanted to switch on onto 1.8, that's fine. And that's probably going to do best. That's going to do well for you on solar. If you're prepared to, to handle, you know, like the critical peak on uh, critical peak days, they'll charge you a dollar a kilowatt hour. Right. right. And, th but the good thing is, so you must be net metered if you got that. Oh no, you must be DG. That's correct. If any outflow that you send out during that time, you get you get a dollar per kilowatt hour yeah. on critical peak days. So mm -hmm. what you should, what you want to do, I've thought about doing this, but it just may be more hassle than I want. When they call a critical peak day, do everything that you can to maximize your outflow. Try to turn off all the loads in your house. If you have a battery, don't charge the battery, let your battery run the stuff in the house and let all your solar go out to the grid if possible. And you get a dollar kilowatt hour for those, I don't know, several or half a dozen days that they might call a critical peak, but. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, let's go to David. Thank you. I also have a time of use meter that was put in several years ago for an EV. Do you know how the time of use rate might compare to the off peak overnight rate on the standard 1.2? I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow. Can you say again, please? The off-peak rate on a 1.2 schedule, how does that compare to my time of use meter? I have a separate a TOU meter uh, for charging my EV. And oh, I'm yeah, okay. All right? Yeah, I understand. So the the um, there's a separate rate you can get a separate meter um, for EV charging, which has a lower, it's not, it's a little bit lower. It's a bit lower. It might be another one or two cents, maybe lower than the uh, the green line here. If you're still looking at the screen, uh, and that'll be only at night. Um, and the the number of hours that that applies for might be different too. And then, yeah, that's the seven. Well, eleven p.m. to seven a.m. on time of use. To okay. Get that right. And then, as the other woman asked, how do we change? Can we do it online? Or have you got to call and wait on the phone thing? Uh, I would call on the phone. The website okay. looks like it should let you, but every solar person that I know, uh, when you look at the website, the website tells you, oh, I'm sorry, you can't have 1.2 or 1.8. Uh, it's not available at your address, is it what it says. Okay, just, thank you. Hey, we have time for three more questions. Please um, reduce background noise by every, muting. Jan, can you, you go on mute, please? Turning off your speakerphone. Thank you. For a gas so, leak or problem, press 1. John, Carver. Gas leak. To report a wire down or electric problem. Or well, she's doing the right data, thing. She's calling DTE already to change rates. Electric so problem. That's good. John, can you, can you mute her? Or shut off information, press 3. Mm -hmm. Or say billing, payments, or shut off. So why don't we go uh, to uh, Louise? Uh, no, no, no. We want to go to Doug. Related matters. Okay. Press four or oh, say God. service or for something else. Press five. Okay, or I'll, say I'll try to talk over this. I was just the question. You said that they cash you out when you're done with your ten years of net metering. If you sell the house before that, do they cash you out? Yeah, if you if you end your service, they cash you out, and the new customer probably won't get net metering either, but. You know, that's though they can still get DG. Um, yes. You all set, Doug? 
Yeah, well, I was also curious, how do you tell how much you've got banked? But uh, we can also move to somebody else. But it'll be on your bill. Your bill will show how much you have banked uh, in kilowatt hours. And then um, it, I think in the past, it showed how many dollars that's worth at the current rate. So, next one. Marion. Go ahead, Marion. All right, got it. Hi, guys. Hey, this is really... Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, this is really interesting. I'm pretty much a newbie as far as I put solar on my horse farm last spring. And it's been really wonderful. It's been generating like crazy. Uh, but I'm wondering, I, I, I don't really understand 1.1, 1.2 and how to choose. I don't really know how to choose. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe one's better for summer, one's better for winter, but now I hear you can only do it once a year. Uh, so I'm just trying to determine how do you choose? The second thing is I put on a big array knowing that I was gonna add more stuff down the road. And um, now I'm doing a bigger inverter so I can actually use one row of panels that I hadn't been using previously because DTE wouldn't okay it. But um, my batteries, I don't have batteries. I have a lot of friends with batteries and it just seemed like it was really expensive to uh, add batteries at that time. But then going through a winter and they said, oh, go through a winter, see what it's like. And looking at my billing, um, I had a lot of uh, money banked and hardly any of it was used. And I find that very frustrating. Um, so there you go. <laughs> a couple of questions. Well, so if there's any other loads that you run with other sources, you know, if you have gas, water heating or anything else, if you have, if your array is big enough to support more loads, add some more. Uh, any kind of electrical loads that would be useful to you. And probably the D1.2, you're, if you installed recently, you're, you're net, you're, you're, you're DG, right? You're not net metered. That's correct. And, and so probably D1.2 is what you would want to use because you'll get more credit for the outflow. Uh, there's not really any downside to it. If you, if you still have, um, if you have excess outflow, then you, you have this resource that you can use to run other things. Um, okay. Great. All, yeah. Thank you, Marion. All last, right, thank you. Last question from Chris. All right, thanks for all this. Try to make this quick. I was just curious if uh, planning to switch to 1.2, but would you recommend trying to self-consume everything during those peak hours, assuming you're generating more than uh, you use, or would you prefer to shift loads to the off-peak cheaper rates just because um, you know, distribution costs kind of cancel out a lot of the savings like where would you want to shift your loads or do the the most in-house load yeah um i kind of my feeling is that uh if i can still use up everything that i outflow if i can use it up in the winter time then i might as well still outflow it um but if i get to the point where i've built up extra outflow um, then I might try to self-consume it, but it's during the summertime. You know, like now currently we have batteries and an electric car and the, the car is full, the batteries are full. There's not much else I can do with it. So the only value is to send it out on peak. And I still, I do definitely try to shift any loads that I can to off peak. So uh, during on peak times, I, I'm fine with letting it go out if I can't use it in the house. And then off peak times, I try to self-consume all of the solar if possible, because there's very little value to sending it out. Um, the outflow credit is a lot less and you can still get the same one amount uh, of, inf of inflow later off peak, but I'd rather send it out on peak and get like two to three times as much inflow later. Okay, and then just a comment to someone else. Um, I did uh, recently get my first bill with the new, uh, I guess D111 rate I got switched to uh, involuntarily and it says it right across that section of the bill, you know, it's electric service time of day, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. So you'll definitely okay. see it on your bill when it does change. Great. Okay, so 
we're going to wrap this up with a couple of final comments. Um, I first of all, I want to thank Dale for putting together this presentation and answering all the questions. If you look at the bottom of the slide that's on your screen, there is a, a link for the slides that Dale showed this evening. And the, and the link he's pointing to with the arrow is the full 12 page document that you can download and print that goes over a lot of the same material and shows a lot of the same graphs. And Dale, if people have further questions, are they will you are you comfortable in sharing your email address that they could yeah. send you an email? Yep. So here's my email in the in the chat. And anybody is please welcome to uh, email me. There was a lot of questions here in the chat. If if you didn't get your question answered, please feel free to email me, and I'll go through those. That's that's fine. Uh, or if you have any other questions, happy to talk about it. There's also the Facebook group, um, Michigan Solar Users Network. That uh, there's discussion and questions in there too. If you if you like using Facebook, have you typed it in the chat yet? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it went to one single person who had uh, sent me yeah. before. So <laughs> sorry about that. Let's do it to everyone. And while Dale is doing that, I want to make a plug for GLREA. If you're not members of the organization, I would encourage you to become members. We're a nonprofit organization. Your dues are tax deductible. Dues begin at $30 a year, um, and it helps support this organization to do this kind of work. You just go to the GLREA website, www.glrea.org. Look for the membership tab at the top. Just click on the tab and you know just follow directions. So I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Again, I want to thank Dale for putting together this presentation. We are recording it. It will be put up on the GLREA YouTube page. But if you, I will be glad to send a link to anybody who sends me an email. And my email address is the letter J, Freeman, F-R-E-E-M-A-N, 13, that's 13, at Comcast.net, N-E-T. And of course, Dale can send you the link as well. So thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this evening. And we look forward to seeing you next week as well. Thank you very much and have a nice evening.